So everybody online is pushing these scan tools and letting you know this is the greatest. And then somebody else says this is the greatest, but there's certain things that they don't tell you. So in this video today, we're gonna to be talking about the five things that scan tools cannot do. So make sure you guys stick around as it's gonna help you save money and time. Hey everybody, welcome back to Random Fix. So I've been working around cards since I was 13 years old and cards have gone from highly mechanical where all you needed was a screwdriver and a wrench to highly computerized. And thus, we have scan tools, and these scan tools are a must for newer vehicles because they have so many darn computers. Some vehicles have over 30 computers, and you need to be a genius or have a scan tool that can make you a genius to go ahead and solve the issue. But just know, no matter what scan tool you use, whether you spend $79, for something like this, or $500, or even $3,000. There's certain things that scan tools cannot do. And in this video today, we're gonna do a deep dive of this. So I'm gonna give you guys some examples, and hopefully this will help you understand if you need a scan tool, or if this is something that you need to refer to the professionals, as sometimes it doesn't make sense to go and spend $3,000 on a scan tool, if somebody else can solve the problem for you for $300. If you quickly do the math, you're gonna feel the same exact way as I do. If you guys like this kind of content, make sure you guys give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And now let's jump into number one. Number one, scan tools cannot fix your emission problems. What I mean by that is if you get yourself an OBD2 reader like this, this happens to be for $30 or a scan tool and plug it into your vehicle, and let's just say it's got a check engine light on for a P301. This basically means there's a misfire on cylinder number one. If you go clear that data and you go run down to the smog test center, the guy is gonna quickly tell you that your vehicle is not ready, or if he actually performs the test, completes it, charges you, he's gonna basically fail you because your inspection monitors are not ready. And what these inspection monitors are, are basically a set of parameters that the vehicle manufacturer has set to go and get certain monitors ready. So there's a monitor for the oxygen sensor. Sometimes there's an oxygen sensor heater, a catalytic converter monitor, an EVAP monitor. And there's a, quite a few monitors depending on how new your vehicle is. I think my Mercedes here has over 10 monitors versus this Toyota, which has about six. And these monitors basically are not easy to trick and no matter what scan tool you buy you're not going to be able to go around this and if you have a code that is a permanent code just know that even when you clear the code it will still remain in history and the only way to clear it is to go and unlearn the code so the vehicle has to be driven a certain amount of miles and started a certain amount of times for this code to self clear other than that, the only other thing you can do is to go and get a new computer. And if that problem is detected again, that permanent code is gonna come back. So these inspection monitors are a real headache. And today is October 3rd, 2025. And just three days ago, California did something radical, which was to go and really tighten down the restrictions. Before they had uh, exemption for the EVAP monitor, they even got rid of that. So. Now, if you live in California and your car has some sort of code and you go clear it, just know you're going to be up for a little bit of a task and you're going to have to do a drive cycle. And I have plenty of videos down below on how to complete a drive cycle. And if you guys have a particular question about this subject, please ask and I'll point you guys in the right direction. Hey guys, really quick, since we're on reason number one here, just know about 50% of the people that buy scan tools is because they're dealing with an emissions related problem and when you have an emissions related problem just know that they're not going to be able to get their tags and therefore they have to fix it unless you happen to live in a place where smog emissions are not enforced and if you do let me know where you live as a lot of people are going to be jealous of you so let's jump into something basic this is ob2 reader these cost about 30 bucks i've used the heck out of mine you can see it's got a little cracking the screen. This particular OBD2 reader is so amazing as it's got this IM button. So when I'm driving, it will keep beeping 
until the monitors are actually all ready. It does that by auto refreshing every 10 seconds. So I absolutely love this and I wouldn't sell this for $100 plus an ounce of gold if you gave it to me, but I would sell it for, for an ounce of gold by the way. This is great and I'll leave you guys a video review of this because it's amazing as long as you know how to use it. Then we have these app based scan tools right here. So this connects to my phone and then I can go and read live data. It's not really super fast, but it's good enough. And the reason I like this particular unit is it comes with lifetime updates. So this is something I'm gonna be talking about a little bit later on in the video, but just know that scan tools do sometimes require ongoing money and funds to keep updated. And again, if you have a smartphone, you can hook up to something like this. It doesn't give you all the resets that these do this is limited to i think 15 and some of these have about 30 or 34 resets now we get into scan tools like this this happens to be a unit from mucar and i just recently got this and it's got an update so all the time this unit is going to get updated and as long as i have wi-fi i can go and connect just know that subscription is really important as some of the newer Kias and Hyundais won't let you even access the vehicle unless you have an active subscription. And this particular unit again, does quite a few things and it is Bluetooth and I'll leave you guys a review for this. This one's a little unique because it comes with all of these legacy adapters. And as you guys can see, I haven't used it because a lot of times I'm just using OBD2, but if I had an older BMW or Benz, I can connect to those old legacy ports. And to tell you guys the truth, on my newer vehicle, I don't even know where they put these ports, but I know they still have them. And just know, if you're looking for something like this, this will be a good choice. And now, this is, happens to be my favorite device right here. Very similar to this, it's got that Bluetooth and it slaps on the back here. It's got a kickstand, but this one has AI. So I know the title of the video is five things that scan tools can do. And one of them is gonna be you can't fix your car, but this actually takes a AI perspective and narrows down what are the possible causes. It's not perfect and I'll leave you guys a video review to that. And I hope you guys are not dealing with an emissions related issue as they're really time consuming unless you have the right tools and you're willing to think or ask questions. But if you guys are dealing with an emission related issue, you need some help, comment down below and I'll point you guys in the right direction because I have a video for each monitor and how to set that monitor. Don't be shy. So now you guys understand that clearing the code is not gonna be the fix and this will allow us to jump into the second thing that scan tools can do. Number two. Scan tools can't tell you what's wrong with your vehicle. So unless you have a check engine light on, your vehicle might not even know that there's actually something wrong. With so you're driving your vehicle, you're going up a little bit of an incline, and you notice that the vehicle lacks a little power. The check engine light is not on. You know there's something wrong with the vehicle. So how can a scan tool help you? Well, a scan tool can help you by giving you the information that you need or the clues. Then you're gonna have to do some thinking. So for example, let's just say your vehicle is not going up that hill as it should because it's got a misfire on cylinder number one. This is known as a P301 code. If you have a misfire on cylinder number two, it's called a P302. So what you're gonna have to do is do a process of elimination. So I'm gonna show six different reasons why you could have a P301 in your vehicle and the computer hasn't detected it because is they're still within parameters. You can feel it, you can hear it, you may even be able to smell it because if you have a lot of unburnt gas going through your exhaust system, you're gonna be burning up your catalytic converter. And depending on which region of the country you live in, I'm talking to you guys in California, just know a catalytic converter is like $3,000. That's a whole lot of money. Just because your check engine light is not on, doesn't mean that you're not doing damage to your vehicle, you are. So. That's why scan tools are really great when they're used with your brain. Before you start swapping out parts, 
because getting the parts machine gun is very expensive and very time consuming. And we're gonna talk about how this could even make things worse by the choice of parts you use. Number three, scan tools don't actually determine what can and cannot be performed on the vehicle. It's actually the vehicle that limits the scan tool. So let me explain this a little bit. A lot of times I have people ask me if this particular scan tool has power balancing and the scan tool has it. However, they're working on a vehicle such as the Toyota. The Toyota doesn't have power balancing enabled. It's actually the manufacturer that enables that particular special function. Different manufacturers even show the data differently. So when I go to do live data on the Toyota here, it shows it as PIDs and it shows quite a few different fields. However, when I hook up to the Mercedes here, it shows something completely different in an organized fashion. And it's not the scan tool doing it. It's the actual vehicle. Don't get carried away with trying to spend thousands of dollars more on a really fancy scan tool. If all you really do need is that 79 or $500 scan tool. Number four, scan tools, unless you get the really expensive one, plus a paid subscription, cannot program modules. So if you're replacing a module or the computer on the vehicle, none of these scan tools that I have on the table can do this. And honestly, guys, it's not a walk in the park. You can really mess up a car and break it basically if you don't know what you're doing. And the fact that you're watching this video and the fact that I'm letting you guys know I have never done it means it's not easy and I have programmed keys and those kind of things, but those normally do not break your vehicle. So just because you see a scan tool doesn't mean you're gonna be able to program. And one thing that these scan tools can perform is gonna be ECU coding. This is not gonna be ECU programming. They're completely different. The coding is a little bit different because it's like a minor tweak. So for example, if my lights on my Toyota behind me, hey, by the way, I got that little license plate for YouTube. What do you guys think? If it's cool, let me know. But for that Toyota, if I wanted to change the amount of time that the interior lights stayed on for, I can go and tweak that. That's called ECU coding. You could also use it to turn off annoying features like the stop and start on the newer vehicles. But just know it's not gonna work on every vehicle and that newer vehicles like this Mercedes here, they're constantly being updated over the air. So I can go and tweak something today and tomorrow Mercedes downloads a new update and all of a sudden my tweak is gone. Guys, this is the way things are gonna be going forward. So if you have an older car, you may wanna keep it. My older Toyota right there, I'm not selling that thing because honestly, it pays for itself just by me driving it because it takes $20 to fill up. Number five, the scan tool can't figure out the actual cause of the trouble code. So for example, if you had a P301, it doesn't know whether it's a bad spark plug, there's low compression, you got a bad intake or exhaust valve, it can't figure that out. So you're gonna have to go and pull that spark plug out and possibly do a compression test to verify that that cylinder has similar compression to the other ones. And then you're gonna have to put all the other data that you have gotten from your ears, your eyes, and the scan tool to make an educated decision on whether you need to replace something, rebuild something, because the worst thing you can actually do is to start throwing parts at it, and worse, to go throw cheap parts at it. On these newer vehicles, if you have certain components that are bad, do not walk into your local auto parts store and start replacing items such as PCV valves, gas caps, uh, mass airflow sensors, just because they're cheaper. Because in the long run, I'm telling you guys, from running a shop, it's gonna cost you more money. So make sure you guys get the OEM components for what I'm showing you here on the screen as it's gonna save you a bunch of time. And the sixth and final thing that a scan tool can't do is to update with a, out a live subscription. So here's the thing guys, with these scan tools, just know the scan tool can cost maybe 500 bucks. And depending on which scan tool you have, the updates can be $300 a year. So do the math really quick and you'll figure out by year two, the updates have cost you more than the actual scan tool. You really do need these updates in these newer vehicles. Some of the newer vehicles won't even grant you access unless you have a live subscription 
So this is on the newer Kias and Hyundais, and newer vehicles such as the Jeeps and Dodges need another subscription on top of that. However, there are gonna be certain scan tools that I really like, and I'm gonna go ahead and list them down below that come with lifetime updates. And for home DIY, they're so good, they're gonna go and pay for themselves in a number of three to four years. And honestly, they don't cost a lot of money. And the best part about a scan tool is guys, you can let your friends and family borrow it. It won't take anything away from you. They're really hard to break unless somebody drops them as there's really no moving parts. If you go ahead and share the cost of a scan tool with somebody, I think it's easier to swallow that $500 investment. And if you don't have 500 bucks, you can go ahead and get yourself a $79 app based one that comes with the lifetime updates. And if you guys are thinking that you're just gonna go stick with that OBD2 reader that I showed you guys for $39, it's not a bad thought, but here's the difference guys. If you have one of these right here, I would not trust one of these when I'm buying a newer vehicle because some of the newer vehicles are so complicated that they throw off codes on the OE side, not OBD2. This is on the OBD2 side. So you may have a transmission issue on the vehicle and this will not be able to see it. So this can actually cost you more money in the long run. You always wanna have access to the OE side because it'll show you more data, more live data, and you'll be able to see things that are not on the generic side. I really do hope this video has helped you guys out. I'm gonna list all those links down below and if I have special coupons for some of the scan tools that I'm showing you guys, you guys will find it there. Now, there's a lot that goes into these videos, and I'm sure I forgot something. So if there's something that you feel is important that I didn't mention, please let me know what it is, as I'm always learning. And a lot of the content that I've actually created over the years, whether it's about emissions or scan tools, comes from viewers like you. So I really appreciate you guys and your comments. And if you guys like the video again and you learned something, do give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and as always, make it a great day.